My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to America. Other people make friends? I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. All right, how do we parse today's broad-based gigantic rally? Dow gaining 466 points. S&P surging 1.8%. Bye, bye, bye. And the Nasdaq soaring 2.32%. Oh, boy, this was some crazy action. Stocks of all flavors and sizes running, including stocks that really should not be rallying at the same time. From a certain perspective, this move looks like it's being driven by totally contradictory theories about the future. Take the election. Today, the market traded like both Trump and Biden are going to win. Seemingly impossible. But that's what the action seems to be saying. I mean, let me give you both perspectives, though. On the Republican side, with the president now feeling better and set to leave the hospital, they're betting he'll get a big bounce in popularity. Not unlike what happened to Boris Johnson in the U.K. after he got sick. Yes, Trump is expected to leave Walter Reed Medical at 6.30 p.m. Though we're, of course, monitoring the situation. We're going to keep you updated with the latest. Now, if Trump emerges from this thing physically unscathed, or even better than that, as he claims on Twitter, maybe he can make a comeback and win the election. That's the argument he started making today. That You shouldn't worry so much about COVID because we've got some great drugs that can beat this thing. On the Democratic side, though, Biden's been getting some strong polling numbers, much better than Hillary's four years ago. It's increasingly looking like a a landslide victory. That's a real possibility. The Democrats want this election to be a referendum on COVID. Even if the president's fine, the White House turning into a a coronavirus hotspot, it's just called bad optics for the GOP. Even though Biden wants to raise corporate taxes and capital gains taxes, and that is just not great for the market— There are a host of stocks that presumably do better under Democratic leadership. Those stocks, the China stocks, they roared today. For example, we saw big gains in anything that benefits from a more harmonious relationship with China. For good or ill, a Biden administration simply won't be as tough on the Chinese government. That's fantastic for the semiconductor stocks. That's a key leadership group. Does a ton of business over there. And the semis were on fire today. Lots of tech was on fire. And that's China. Don't forget Caterpillar, the usuals. Of course, only one candidate can actually win the election. Genius. But maybe there's a way to square the circle. I think that what we got today was the removal of uncertainty. President Trump is not going to pass away from COVID, thank heavens. And we probably won't have a contested election because some people think Biden's polling so well. Now, there's nothing the market hates more than uncertainty. Take it away. Stocks go higher. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not calling the election. That's a sucker's game after 2016. I'm just telling you what I see in the tape. The tape speaks to me. I am translating the tape and telling you what it's saying. Now, if Biden has a strong hand, that may turn into a strong hand for Speaker Pelosi in her negotiations with the White House, which makes a stimulus bill more likely. The market needs some steam, some kind of stimulus package if it's going to keep running. Of course, the American people need stimulus package if they're going to keep eating. And the anticipation was palpable today. Talks continue. Assuming we do get another bailout, that means the government will need to borrow a fortune. So, of course, interest rates are soaring. While that's bad news for the housing stocks, which pulled back from all-time highs this morning, it's great for the banks, thank heavens, which report next week. If they can argue that business will get better with higher rates and show they're doing well with the market's newfound volatility and record stock issuance, a possibility, then some of the financials might suddenly become viable, not all of them. The second worst group in the market, well, it could turn positive, and that would be a big deal, especially because they report next week. Meanwhile, the price of crude roared! Mostly because of stimulus hopes. That took up the entire oil complex, which is the worst group in the market. Now, I am begging you. I'm not going to get on my hands and knees to do it. But I am telling you, sell, 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 sell. please sell into strength here. There's simply too much supply, which makes it very hard for oil to put on a sustained rally. Tomorrow, the analysts who like oil will come out and tell you to buy it because they can't resist. And you'll get a higher price. Go, go, go. What else benefits from a second round of stimulus? Okay. Well, there's the remodel trade. I saw uh, earlier on, on, um, on Melissa's show, people were talking about buying Whirlpool. That makes sense. Was that my buddy Tim was saying buy Whirlpool. People are stuck at home. They, want, they, they have more money. 
They'll spend it on their houses. They'll work from home, make your home better looking. That's why these stocks won't quit. Now, my favorites, of course, now are Best Buy. That stock soared, adding that one to the list. Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. Target, Costco, I told you that stock would get that pullback and you had to buy it. Now, by the way, I also am now adding this one, the much hated Bed Bath & Beyond. And, and, and I know it's run a lot, blow a quarter last week. Maybe if it comes back, maybe it comes under 20, can't get in. Never forget, this means buy on the desk. Never forget, stimulus means buy retail. But here's another contradiction. Normally when interest rates shoot higher, they're now at levels we haven't seen since August. You're supposed to sell the turbocharged growth stocks. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the so-called handbook. But not in this market, though. The biotechs all trade together. They're supposed to be down. Uh, but they're all packed into these ridiculous ETFs. So when one of them gets good news, like Regeneron, which makes the antibody calculus seem to work on the president, takes up the entire group. Regeneron stock roared $40, which dragged up the rest of the industry, even though this sector normally wilts with higher rates. It didn't hurt the Bristol Myers, just paid a gigantic 61% premium for another biotech acquisition, which is myocardia. This deal reminded us that many stocks could be worth a lot more than we thought. More on this later when we speak to the CEO of Bristol Myers, Dr. Giovanni Caforia. What else? Well, the market has what I call bell cows, and the loudest may be <laughs> NVIDIA. The world's top chip maker talked about new supercomputers harnessing the power of their semiconductors for drug development. You can't beat that theme in this environment. NVIDIA's brilliant CEO Jensen Wong, in his amazing conference today, said he wants to dominate the data center and artificial intelligence. Do not bet against Jensen, all right? Never! I know you weren't thinking of doing that, but I just want to make it clear. Finally, there's the oddest theme of all, the term, the V. Yes, the amazing rebound in manufacturing that as many Republican senators are holding out against another round of stimulus because we're doing so well. Today, we got some preliminary truck numbers. That's a very good indicator of the economy. And my head was spinning like Reagan in the exorcist. Never been able to do that. You know that? 32,000 Class 8 units, up 160% year over year, 55% month over month. I mean, what is that? Smaller trucks were also doing strong, too. Now, I am astonished that we can have such strong manufacturing economy, especially when we're seeing huge layoffs in the service sector, like all the people who work at the 500 Regal Cinemas that are closing. But the auto industry is on fire now. Why? Because you've got people coming back. They've moved to the suburbs from cities. They, they, they have that mass transit they don't want to take anymore, so they need a car to get around. It's an incredible undiscovered bull market, except for we all see it in the used car plays. Take a look at Carvana, CarMax, AutoNation, Lithium Motors. You know what's my favorite here? I can't believe I'm saying it. It's a reveal. We call that a reveal. Ford! That's right. I'm actually warming up the Ford. I know. I know. I know. I mean, I swore. I swore I would never warm up to it. I said over and over again, I would never, ever. Wa- I'm warming up to it. OK, why? Because not because it's at seven dollars, you Robin Hoodites. It's because the company seems actually determined. To not lose money. Where's the old Ford way? Uh, anyway, I love the new electric of F-150 that's coming out in 2022. I already asked my wife if she wanted it for her birthday. She said no. But in the interim, I am floored at how well the used F-150s are retaining their value. That's the way to tell what a car or a truck is worth, the used price. It's not often that all roads lead higher. In fact, it's as rare as a partial clips of the sun. No, no, I didn't say full. Can't be total. Because uh, someone pulled the plug on the restaurant stocks, and I didn't like the action in Zoom video, which closed at 485 after 40 with 500 again this morning. With a few exceptions, though, the bottom line is that this market's taking its cue from a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Something familiar, something peculiar, something for everyone. A comedy tonight! But let's not overthink this. Last week was totally insane. Today felt less uncertain. Even if the action made you think that whoever wins this election, we're going higher. As long as we don't have to wait weeks for the actual results. More man money ahead. I've got the CEOs of Bristol Myers Squibb and Slack. And of course, we'll bring you the latest about President Trump's departure from Walter Reed. I would stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.